So today I'm going to go through paper one, question two. Um, it's the eight marker, so it's not, you know, it's not the dominant part of the paper, but it is one that we want to make sure that we can do very well because the exact same skills are used in paper two, question three, um, the ability to analyse language. And it's also a skill which is useful in your literature exams. And for question four on both papers. So language analysis is key here and I'm going to go through the same kind of structure that I used with um, paper one, question four, apart from the structural bit. So here is the text I'm using. It's really short um, because, well, I wanted to make sure that I had a short text that we could look at. I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to leave it on the screen so that you can pause and read yourself. Now, our question two, Usually, the part of the text will be um, reprinted for you. So you don't have to worry too much about getting the right section, but I still wanted to go through the process of outlining the section with you, just to make sure that you're used to it. So focus on lines 15 to 24. How does the writer use language to describe Katie's grandmother? Okay, so 15 to 24 is this section here. What I want to make sure I don't do is I don't want to talk about any of this. I do want to read it though, because I want to make sure that the rest makes sense. So again, we're going to read through the contextual information at the beginning. The following is an extract from Unbecoming, published in 2015. In this extract, Katie's grandmother, Mary, has appeared after years of absence. So she doesn't know her grandmother. That's important to kind of work out from the context there. So I'm just going to read the bit that we're going to focus on, <clears throat> just so it makes a lot of sense. Katie didn't know what to call her either. She tried Nan earlier, but that sounded strange and got zero response. Mrs Todd, Grandma, there were no rules. What was good was that you could stare at her and she didn't seem to mind. She was quite pretty, actually. Had a soft-lined face and her cheeks were all rosy with a faint-in light. What was bad was that she smelled. Bread left to fester in a plastic bag was Katie's closest approximation. And she was also really thin. You could actually see her collarbone pushing up from the top of her cardigan like it wanted to escape. And the skin at her neck was so transparent you could see her pulse quivering. So here we've got quite a positive description and here we've got quite a negative description. So what we probably want to do is divide our answer into part of the positive and part of the negative. We don't want to contradict ourselves, but we want to make sure that we talk about the main features that we want to talk about. Now, usually I would say three points is perfect. But... Here we've got an eight mark question. So realistically, if we do two points really well, that's absolutely fine. Um, and what I'm going to do with my highlighter is I'm going to decide on the main things that I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to select short phrases that use language in particular for effect. And now what language means is the phrasing. Okay, that's the main part of language is phrasing. So I quite like she was quite pretty, actually, had a song on my face, her cheeks were all rosy. And then also, you could actually see her collarbone pushing up from the top of her cardigan like it wanted to escape. The skin at her neck was so transparent, you could see the pulse quiver. So they're the main phrases that I'm going to focus on. And I don't need to worry about highlighting a whole lot, because these are the bits that I'm mainly going to focus on. Ideally, shorter quotes are better, but for now, I'm just going to leave that with that. Now, for the language question, we are mainly going to do uh, your obvious method. And remember, it needs to be a language method. Your image or tone. And then a word choice and connotation. And the aim is to link all of those to the main idea. OK, now <clears throat> this is how you can break up your answer, but also gives you lots to talk about um, in case you're one of those people who literally say had a soft line face. This shows she had a soft face because that's not really what we want to get from that. We want to make sure that there's plenty more that we can say. So the question, I need to go back to it just to make sure I'm talking about the right thing. How does the writer use language to describe Katie's grandmother? OK, so I'm going to choose a phrase. Uh, let's go. She was quite pretty, actually had a soft line face and her cheeks were rose. It's quite a long 
quite a long quote to focus on. I think I'm just going to cut it there. So she was quite pretty actually, had a soft line face. Okay. Now, my obvious language method has got to really be a type of imagery or the tone that's used. Um, so it's quite soft imagery. And it creates a kind of still image, I think. Okay, so I've already done language method and image. I'm going to move on to tone. That actually really stands out to me. So what I'd want to do is for the tone is a sense of surprise. And a sense of surprise at how she looks. Word choice and connotation. There's a few words in there I could talk about. I could talk about pretty, I could talk about actually, but I quite like the word lined. So lined has, uh, has connotations of age. But they could have just said had a soft aged face, but they've gone for lined instead, which almost shows that there's there's a lot of detail to her face. Almost like a book, lined book. I might be going a bit far, but I quite like that. So, so that's my first point. That's going to be my point one. And then my next point, I think I'm going to focus on the skin at her neck was so transparent you could see the pulse quivering. Um, so here we've got, you know, a completely different type of imagery. So here we've got quite weak imagery. And to me, it's quite almost it's not disgusting necessarily, but it's quite it's it's a worrying image. So I've done the image and I've done the tone. Okay. <clears throat> and then my word choice is either gonna be that or that. Now I haven't mentioned so transparent you could see, so I think I might put in that it's hyperbolic or that um, we have senses in here and then last but not least then I can talk about that way I've talked about transparent I can talk about quivering and that suggests she's perhaps timid or scared as well okay so that's going to be my second point. Now, if I really wanted to, I can have uh, a third point in there, I'm sure, because I've got to see a collarbone pushing like it wanted to escape. There's an obvious device there, we could talk about similarly, but I'm going to stick to these two for now, just to break it up, to show you how that might look when I'm writing it up. Now, <clears throat> if I go for, my favourite point is actually point two, but I'll go for point one, so that I can show you how to write it up. So all you do is, is you write it in order. So we need to work out what this shows about her. So <clears throat> I think I'm going to go with the soft imagery as my opening point. So the writer creates the impression that Katie's grandmother is kind and soft. That's a bit odd, I guess. This is highlighted through the use of soft imagery, such as, and then I've got my quote. She was quite pretty, actually had a soft lined face by use oh uh which because so i want to go into my what i said here about a still image so which creates an image of stillness
Okay, so by using such soft, kind words, the writer suggests that Katie <coughs> feels a sense of natural love towards her grandmother. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get a little bit more out of it, but mainly this is this bit. So I need to talk about these, but every time I need to link it back to the main idea that the writer is trying to convey by using that vocabulary. Next, I could talk about the tone. So, and now I want to call your attention to our value of verbs. So this is emphasised. Through the, and then back to my notes again, the tone of surprise. Through actually, which suggests that Katie is shocked by her feelings towards her grandmother. Now I'm going to go on to the word choice. So we said the word lined, age, detail to her face. Okay, so the choice of the word lined further not only describes her grandmother's age, but also connotes a sense of detail in her face. Katie seems to want to be able to read her and get to know her. <clears throat> which is suggested by links between line and reading. Now, it's not an obvious place to go, I guess, but this bit at the beginning is going to get you a couple of marks. This goes more into a clear analysis because you're really explaining the choices and then finally you're trying to think a little bit outside the box with the words just make sure you don't repeat yourself so Katie's grandmother is kind of soft this is highlighted for use of soft imagery such as she was quite pretty actually a soft fine face which creates an image of stillness by using such soft kind words the writer suggests that Katie feels a sense of natural love towards her grandmother this is emphasized through the tone of surprise through actually which suggests that Katie is shocked by her feelings towards her grandmother. The choice of the word lined further not only describes her grandmother's age, but also connotes a sense of detail in her face. Katie seems to want to be able to read her and get to know her, which is suggested by the links between lined and reading. I'll go back to what we did there. First of all, we identified the obvious language method being used, whether that be simile, metaphor, or a type of imagery. Or here again, we've got other types of other language devices senses, hyperbole. Then the image and the tone created. Um, you can separate those. It could be just the image or it could be just the tone. 
and then make sure you include this bit, the word choice in the conversation. So if we were to write up the weak imagery, we'd use exactly the same structure. The writer creates the impression that grandmother is weak. This is created through the worrying image in the phrase, which is there. Um, by using this worrying image, the writer suggests, and then to your main idea. Then you could talk about the hyperbole or the senses in there, and then the, and then the word choice. Okay, so all you need to make sure is that after the obvious language method, you link the effect to the main idea. So it's obvious language method, effect, main idea, then an image, and this is your further analysis. Hopefully that's nice and clear. Thank you.